live from Cleveland, Ohio, at the Acacia Plantation. It's our local Central Park. I just saw a deer right over there. Oh man, it just slipped into the bushes. Uh, but this is where we are now, here visiting my parents and family for a few days, and here to share a beautiful thought that is related to this week's Torah portion. So, the previous Rebbe, Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak Schneerson, was one of the most remarkable personalities, Jewish personalities of the 20th century. He survived and experienced many things in his life, including the pogroms and persecution in Russia, the communists' war battle against Judaism, then moved to America and combated the American apathy and scorn towards the Torah, and sometimes single-handedly fought and prevailed over them. There's a lot to talk about the previous Rebbe. You could look it up, you could read up on him, I'm sure you've heard more. He was our Rebbe's father-in-law. His Our Rebbe married the previous Rebbe's daughter, Chaya Mushka, after whom many are named. He was a giant of a man, a godly man, and our Rebbe's Rebbe. Imagine that. What gave him the strength, the power, the conviction to achieve what he did? This is about that, or at least a portion of it, aside, aside from good genes. So, going back to personal memory, when I was in my life 15 through 18 years old, I spent in Israel, and I had, it was two and a half years, I was in Yeshiva in Migdal HaEmek. There, four great pillars, rabbis that run the Yeshiva at the time, a couple hundred years ago, the mashpia of the yeshiva, the Hasidic influencer. His name is Rabbi Itch, Itchke, is Itchke Gurevich, Rabbi Gurevich, Rabbi Itchke Gurevich. He's a well-known Hasidic figure, also a giant of a man in his own right. I remember vividly of our Brangen Hasidic gathering that was celebrating Yud based Tammuz, the 12th of Tammuz, which was the birthday of the previous Rebbe, and the date of his release from Tsarist Russia prison, from the communist prison, because he was serving the Jewish community and working hard to make them, to keep Judaism alive. The so Fabring and all night long, Yitzchak Rebbe was banging on the table and screaming in Hebrew, Kach velo acheret! And the original in Yiddish, Azoi unit anders, Azoi unit anders, Kach velo What was going on? In a talk, 1960, the Lubavitcher Rebbe spoke at a Fabring in celebrating Yud Beis Tammuz, the 12th of Tammuz, the birth date of the previous Rebbe. The Rebbe spoke about an event. That was a monumental event in the life of the previous Rebbe, who was going to be his father-in-law. The Rebbe spoke about this, and the Rebbe said that the previous Rebbe, Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak Schneerson's father, whose name was Epsholm Dovber, Epsholm Ber, the Rebbe Rashab, he was fifth Chabad Rebbe, he told him, he called him in for his 15th birthday, when the previous Rebbe, Rebbe Yosef Yitzchak, was turning 15 on Yud based Hamas. He said, come, go to the mikvah. We're going to the Ohel. Now the Ohel at the time is not our Ohel over here in New York, in Queens, but it was the Ohel who was the resting place of the previous Rebbe's, of his father, the grandfather of the previous Rebbe, the father of the Rebbe Rashab, uh, who, was, who was known as the Rebbe Maharash, Rebbe Shmuel, and his father, 
Rav's the Tzemach Tzedek. The two Chabad Rebbe's who were at the Ohel. He said, we're going to the Ohel. He went to the Mikvah, and they went to the Ohel. They entered the Ohel. The previous Rebbe described that his father came with a trembling, awesome feeling. He stood by the Ohel. He opened up the Aron Kodesh, the Holy Ark, and started crying. The previous Rebbe says, he too didn't know what this was about, but he started crying too. And there was this feeling of holiness, crying. The Rebbe Rashab, the previous Rebbe's father, started reciting and explaining a part of the Tanya from the Alter Rebbe, from the first Chabad Rebbe, actually a letter of the Tanya that's titled Chagra the Oiz Masneha. She girdled her loins with strength. It's part of the Eish Chayel we say every Friday night. Eish Chayel Meinza Berachek Mivninim Bichra. It goes as an alphabetical order. Every verse begins with one of the letters of the alphabet, written by King Solomon for his mother, and it's a praise of the woman. And the number, the letter Chet, the eighth pasuk, is Chagra. She girdled her loins with strength. What does that mean? Contemporarily, it means someone's getting ready for action, getting ready for to do something, to make something happen, to make a change. It means preparing yourself to do what it takes. So, he spoke about that, and then he said to his son, this is his 15 year old birthday gift, his birthday present. He said, I am now making a pact with you, a krisas bris. I'm going into a pact with you, and I'm bringing you to the akeda, to the binding, like the akeda sitzak, the binding of Isaac. What's going on? Is he going to take out a knife? Cliffhanger. Just kidding. So, what is the idea of a pact anyway, parenthetically? A pact, a bris, a covenant, is something, is a commitment that two people make with each other with the understanding, with a commitment that is that surpasses anything that will ever happen to them in the future. Meaning, if, even if logic claims and dictates that this relationship should be broken, the pact itself is stronger than the logic that says to break it. And it will remain. The relationship will remain strong. That's what a pact is according to Jewish tradition. So he says, I'm making with you now a pact, a bris, a krisas bris, and a covenant, and an akeda. I'm bringing you to the altar, to the akeda. Now, what does the akeda mean? Akeda, literally, it means the binding, the wrapping around, the binding of Isaac. That's in this week's Torah portion, hence the connection. So, when Abraham brought his son Isaac up as uh, an offering, when Isaac finally figured out what was happening, that it was he, Isaac, or Yitzchak, who was going to be the sacrificial lamb on the altar, of Isaac himself, he said, please, Dad, Father, tie me up, bind me, so that my body shouldn't winch, and I shouldn't interfere with the process when you're going to slaughter me. So that's the binding. So the purpose of the binding, of tying something up anytime, anywhere, is to make sure it stays in place, that it stays strong, that it stays as you want it to be, as the binder wants it to be. So, the uh, previous Rebbe, Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak's father, who was the Rebbe Rashad, he says, I'm uh, making this pact with you, that you need to bind, gird your loins with strength. And he explained the verse as follows. And he said that, Masnaim, 
the loins are this middle part of the lower body that stabilizes the person and gives the person strength to stand strong. Gives them the power, enables them to stand strong. And that also represents action, doing something. Standing strong and doing something. And this, the loins, traditionally have a belt. Now, different people wear belts for different reasons. I wear a belt to keep my pants up. Other people wear, in the olden days, in the tradition, I looked this up on Google, the tradition was that women would have long robes and they would gird their robes in the belt so it shouldn't interfere with their work. But it was, either way, it's a stabilizing experience. So he says, he says, Hagra Ba'osmas now, the loins, the stability that you need to have, you need to bind it, and gird it, belt it with O's. Now what is O's? Masnayim is action. Belting it with strength. O's means strength. But what kind of strength? He said O's over here means Mesiras Nefesh. Mesiras Nefesh in Hebrew literally translates as giving over the soul. In English, loosely we translate it as self-sacrifice. It needs to be complete self-sacrifice. And he says, I am now, his father said to him, I am now transferring to you the mantle of leadership at 15 years old, the mantle of Askanis Tsiburit, which means communal activities, communal activism. You are now becoming the leader of the Jewish people, of the Chabad movement, and wherever Jews are, you will be now responsible to take care of them materially and spiritually. I'm transferring the leadership over to you at age 15. This is your birthday present. And I'm giving you the tools. And the tool is Chagra Ba'ozmas. Now gird your loins with Mesiras Nefesh. Mesiras Nefesh means sacrifice. And he explains. He says, first, that now the Reb, that's the story. The Rebbe talks about this and explains that, of course, the foundation has to be sacrificed. But later on, we need to use our minds, our intelligence, and our feelings, our emotions, in order to achieve our goal. Now, what is the goal that we're talking about over here? And the Rebbe asks, why did we hear the story? Why did the previous Rebbe tell us the story? And this is the practical relevance for us. The Rebbe says that every story that we hear is a message for us. And the reason why we heard the story is because each of us has a little bit of that story in ourselves, that we are all shluchim, we're all messengers of God Almighty to bring Torah and Judaism to other people who have less than us in Torah and Judaism, and to bring the light of Hasidus to others. And the way we need to do that, we need to use our intelligence to customize the message and the presentation to make it fit the abilities and the capabilities and the paradigm of the recipient. But it can only work for real if the if it starts and the foundation is Chagra Be'oz Masneha, which means Mesiras Nefesh. Mesiras Nefesh means completely dedicating yourself no matter what. Now, what is this Mesir Snefesh? The Rebbe explained, he said, if a person is not so committed 100%, then there will be obstacles that get in the way that interfere with the job and might throw the person off balance. There are obstacles of time. A person might say, I don't want to spend so much time on this, on helping other Jews come back to Judaism or money, it might cost money, or effort and energy. And the Rebbe said, but if you have this complete dedication, Mesiras Nefesh, and in the Hasidic perspective, Mesiras Nefesh means Mesiras Ratzon, it means your soul, the highest, pretty much the highest level of the soul that we can access is our willpower. And he says, if you dedicate your will to what God wants, 
then everything else will follow and none of the obstacles will interfere. And that's what the Rebbe asked us to do. He said, whether it's time, money, or life itself. And that's the story for this week's Parsha. Its connection is because this was a binding of a different Isaac. Because the previous Rebbe's name was Yosef Yitzchak Schneerson. So the first Isaac was Isaac Schneerson. Not Schneerson. Oh, uh, slip. The first Isaac was Isaac Yitzchak ben Avraham, the son of Avraham. This binding of Isaac was an Isaac, I think there's a deer right in there, it was a, it was the binding of Isaac Yosef Yitzchak Schneerson, the previous Rebbe. And the Rebbe tells us that we all need to be bound like that. That's the story live from Cleveland, Acacia Park Plantation. Thanks for joining. Share. God bless you. Friends and runners alike. Take care.